Hi everyone, welcome back to another vlog. My name is Claire Carmichael, I'm a registered nurse and now a nurse lecturer. And this is why the video is all about how to become a nurse lecturer, just in case it's something you've thought about doing. Also, you might notice a little cheeky plug for myself. This is a sneak peek of what the front cover may potentially look like of my new book that's coming out, which is pretty much a student nurse survival guide. I'm gonna put the link below in the description. It's not ready to purchase yet. It's still in the editing stages, but they've put it on the website ready. So you can have a look, put it on your watch list, ready to purchase. But I will also be doing some little giveaways with it because they do give me some free copies to give away. So I am gonna be doing some giveaways of the book and hopefully you'll all share it far and wide and help each other out and yes. We'll see. Firstly, as always, another disclaimer, every single place you apply to may be different. They might, ha they might have different person specifications. They might want you to have different levels of experience, different qualifications. I can only go by what I've seen and what I've done myself. So have a look first point, first tip, have a look at the place that you want to apply for, the university, college, wherever, look at the job description, look at the person's specification and the qualifications you need to apply and go from there. Go and get what you need to become a nurse lecturer at the place that you want to work at, if that makes sense. So to become a nurse lecturer, they usually want you to have some sort of experience in teaching. That can be anything. Um, so things like something that I did was even as a student nurse, I was always offering my services to do things. So I spoke in some lectures uh, for the previous cohorts, first year, stuff like that. When I qualified, I also set up my own webinars to teach student nurses and qualified healthcare professionals on different things, things like sexual health, transgender healthcare. Something else that I did was I signed up to be a guest lecturer as well at universities. So have a look and get in contact with different universities and ask how to become a guest lecturer and you can get paid work for doing like little guest lecturing pieces. So I did a number of sessions. I did some case study sessions. I created my own PowerPoints and things like that to, to deliver to student nurses. Um, so have a look at getting into doing some guest lecturing, just ask the university. Another thing you can do is sign up to do things like skill sessions for universities because I know they like to have other nurses come into the university to help with skill sessions and teaching and things like that. So ask them if they need somebody like that as well because they like to have a bank of people on their books to do that. So sign yourself up and get yourself in there. Qualification wise, I know some universities like you to have done a master's or an equivalent, so a level seven course, which is equivalent to a master's, which is something that I did. So when I qualified, I went straight into GP, as some of you know, and I did my level seven uh, fundamentals or foundations of general practice nursing course. It was level seven, it was master's level. So I had that as well in the bag. So I had that and I had some teaching experience as well, just some little bits here and there that I did. Those are the main two things that universities like to see and it'll look really, really good for your CV, your application form, um, and your interviews as well if you talk about those things. Other things that might go in your favour as well is if you've done any extra courses so let's just say again I'm just going to use GP as an example so in GP and on wards and things like that you'll have specialised nurses so you'll have the asthma nurse or someone that specialises in diabetes or tissue viability or something like that. If you've got those qualifications and training to say I am our you know clinics asthma nurse respiratory nurse that's going to look really good as well because they like to see people from different backgrounds that have got different specialities as well. So for me, I did my asthma training as well. And I also had a lot of sexual health background and transgender healthcare background. So I had some little specialities behind me as well that I think looks good on your CV or your application. So anything that you can put on there that's going to go in your favour, do the courses, put them into your application. Another thing that some universities like you to have is if you are a mentor, now called practice supervisor, practice assessor. Um, so if you are part of that group of people, that is great as well. So I know I did my practice supervisor and practice assessor training. 
So that went in my favour as well. So I had a lot of little things, as you can see, that went in my favour for the application form to look good in, on paper. And then I just had to sell myself in some way in the interview. So once you've checked that you've got the right qualifications, the right bits of experience that you need, apply, put it all in there. Make sure when you're applying as well, look at the university or the college, their visions, their values, get to know the university or the college or wherever you're applying to. Um, do some of your background work. Make sure you're revising for your interview, basically, because they could ask you anything. And the last thing you want is to sit there and be like, I've got no idea what they've just asked me. I definitely over revised for my interview because I really, really wanted this job so, so much. But you just never know what they're gonna ask you. And that's always the scariest part about interviews because you want to be prepared for the job that you want to do. Um, so I always advise do your research around the role, the responsibilities and what's involved in teaching and nurse lecturing. And a little bit about the role of a nurse lecturer. I'll probably do a, a bit another video on that about the role specifically and expectations and things like that. I'm going to do a separate video on this because otherwise this video is going to be way too long. But I will say this, if you think that being a nurse lecturer is you're just going to show up, teach some things and go home. Get that out your mind because you're doing 101 different things. That getting up and teaching and speaking in front of people is a tiny fraction of what you're actually doing. More to come in another video, so watch out for that. So I have just brought my laptop over just to go through a section from a job description from a university out there, it's public information, so I'm just gonna go through it on some of the requirements that you might need on the person specification. Okay, so first degree in course relevant subject, a higher degree course in relevant subject or working towards this, uh, a willingness to study for a PhD because they do like to see that you're undertaking research and things like that, a teaching qualification or willingness to work towards it, Possesses and maintains a sufficient breadth and depth of specialist knowledge and discipline of teaching methods, techniques to work within established teaching programmes. So you've got evidence that you're doing your CPD as well, you're engaging, you're keeping up to date with everything. Engage an interest, you've got to show an interest in students and being able to motivate them and get them enthusiastic about studying. Familiarity with a variety of strategies to promote and assess learning outcomes. Um, so it's using different strategies to sort of assess students, that sort of thing. Again, that's going to come in if you're a practice assessor, practice supervisor, mentor, that sort of thing. Excellent written and verbal communication skills. We should all have that anyway as a nurse. Good interpersonal skills. Again, we, we should have that anyway as a nurse. Able to build contacts, participate in internal and external networks for the exchange of information and collaboration. Some prior experience of undergrad undergraduate teaching is desirable so this isn't a hundred percent essential for this post on this one and supervisory skills are also desirable so the list on there isn't too bad so like i said that was a person specification from a random job for the same role that i'm doing so i'm an assistant lecturer i'm not a fully fledged lecturer yet but once i've done my teaching qualification and everything i can go on to then progress to become a lecturer so that's it from me. I hope this video has been useful in helping you understand how to become a lecturer in some way or another. If there's anything I haven't covered and you want to know, give me a comment below and I will respond to you. But for now, I hope you'll have an amazing day and I shall see you later.